Greetings, everyone. Welcome to uh, a short demo on uh, some Photoshop coloring. I'll be using this uh, illustration I did a couple days ago uh, involving a concept called Hawk Pride uh, for UMES. And I'm just going to do a little bit of uh, flats uh, on Photoshop followed by a little bit of detailing. I'm going to focus on one of these character faces that are right here. Um, as you can see, I'm using a tablet uh, for this demonstration rather than my laptop. I wanted to be able to showcase as best as possible. I'm um, also going to try to zoom in both here as well as on my camera just a wee bit so we can get a little bit of a sense of where our characters are. And I'm going to try to make that a little bit bigger right there too. Let me go back just for a second to showcase a little bit of what I'm going to be working with. Um, so I'm using Photoshop for this presentation. Um, I'm going to be coloring uh, on already pre-inked material. Um, I drew the ink, so hopefully no copyright issues there. Um, and I'm a made-up character. Um, and I'm going to be using a palette set up by the logo of uh, UMES. Uh, so... I'm going to be coloring in layers, which means that I'm going to be building layers underneath my inking layer to uh, set up my flats and then put in some uh, detailing material. Um, mostly I'm going to be using my pen tool, uh, the, uh, the eye drop piece right here for uh, to capture colors, um, some of these uh, selectors. Um, clearly my palette, um, and later on, uh, my gradient tool and so on and so forth. As I go, I'll probably explain a little bit of the materials that I'm using for this presentation. Um, let me go ahead and focus on this one face right here. So the first thing we're going to do is, as you can see, I've set up a blank background layer and locked that up and I've set out a layer for my inks which I've also set up. Um, I don't know if I'm going to lock it or not. Um, anything that I do underneath my inks, I'm going to be layering separately. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to go right here to my inking layer. I'm going to go where it says normal. I'm going to hit that, and I'm going to put multiply. The reason for that is because if I want to have any color appear underneath my inks, um, if it's set up on normal setting, it's gonna treat it as a full on flat layer since it was scanned in. Uh, but when you multiply, it allows for the colors to show. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go to my background layer and hit this little button right down here and set up my first layer. Um, sorry, operational issues right here. Uh, Reds. What I'm doing right now is I'm naming layers as I go along. The reason for that is because um, you want to make sure that as you move along, you name every single layer you're working on so that it becomes easier for anyone who works on this piece or has to do any type of printing material connected to this piece afterwards, they're able to engage it easily. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go to my second picture which I uploaded which is that of the logo of uh, UMES I'm going to select my eye drop or color drop pick hit that as you can see we just got the color of our UMES logo I'm going to go back here and we set up reds well my hawk's uh, fur is going to be red so I'm going to go ahead and select my inking tool I start coloring right in and what you're essentially doing right now is you're creating what we call flats now what flats are I'm gonna erase it a little bit right here oh what no oh it didn't select a layer make sure that I've been coloring on the right layer that's one key thing is you want to make sure you're coloring on the right layers as you go along so you want to 
name. There we go. And right here, you're basically putting in your flats. Um, not quite going into uh, shortcut keys in this demo. Um, I can definitely do one where we can talk a little bit about that. Uh, here, I wanted you to see more of how to use the uh, screen a little bit more. Uh, so, as you can see, I keep going over here to my spot right at the stop. This is uh, the layout for your inking tool for your pen. You hit right here. As you can see, there's different level sizes for your pen along with different types of pens that you can pick. I'm currently using a uh, a sharper uh, brush uh, rather than a soft brush. Um, I tend to color in sharp brushes. I know a lot of people prefer softs and then go into sharps. I find that uh, when doing inks for uh, colors for comics, um, sharp colors can work really well. And then you can always uh, soften or loosen your line work depending on how much opacity you use. Um, yeah, this is essentially, depending on how you think about all this stuff, the more boring part of this presentation, only because uh, you're basically just adding flats. Um, the way I tend to work on Photoshop is I always go, it's a little bit different to how I work on uh, my marker work. My marker work, I tend to do uh, brighter colors first, then darker colors second. Um, with Photoshop, I, I do at times do that, but it's a lot easier to build on lighter colors on the top if you want to, so I don't necessarily have to. And with this particular demo, I'm going with my base colors first. Um, don't worry too much about coloring outside of the lines because you can always go back in and erase. Um, the biggest advantage that Photoshop offers to uh, its user is that it's malleable. You can always go back in and fix things. Okay. I just kind of put in my uh, flats for uh, for a top layer here. And again, we're going to go back in and, f and, and, and clean up in a little bit. But for the most part, this is it. And then I'm going to go ahead and go back down. And I'm going to build a layer that says beak. And instead of calling it gray, I'm going to call it beak because it's the only part of this that's really going to get gray on it. So I'm going to do the same thing. Select my eyedrop tool. Select my color. Go back over here. And I'm going to go back to my pen, make sure that I'm on the right layer. I'm going to color in my beak. Again, not too worried about over layering. And as you can see, I can throw in lines like, like so. Woo! And not worry too much about affecting the top layer because I built my beak layer underneath my reds. So once again, you press the bottom, bottom uh, uh, button right here with a little lift off um, that is for beaks <laughs> that is for layers um, you create your layer that way you always put your layer uh, you select a layer that's below the one that you want to, the material to appear under and then you build your layer on top of that so they all appear underneath each other and the good thing about that is that if it's something that's meant to be colored underneath your piece or that grows outside of it. You can always put your layer underneath the main color and that way 
uh, you can go nuts, draw color all the way over here. And then when you go to your reds and select your uh, eraser tool, which right now for some reason is super big, and go back in here and erase. See, you're just erasing the top layer. As you can see, I selected the reds for this, okay? Uh, fair warning, I tend to sing when I draw sometimes, so I'll be a little bit of that. If you mind it, well then I'm, I'm extremely sorry. Um, I'm erasing here just a wee bit to cover the eyes. And if you erase too much, don't worry, you can go back in and add it all over again. The uh, the size ratio for your uh, eraser is still pretty much the same as well. And while I'm at it, I might as well just clean up a couple things around the sides here and over here. Go back in and clean. Also another fair warning, my my tablet is pretty good, but it has an overheating problem, which means that it makes a ridiculous noise when uh, the fan belt goes off. So if it starts going, um, that just means it, it's going to blow up and I should duck. No, uh, it means that uh, the fan belt's working but it will make some noise, so fair warning. We may not hear it, but maybe we will. Um, so here we go, cleaning, cleaning. Since he's a hot character, technically you can still color all the way through there and be Okay, I can switch colors. Same process, picking that other one. And if you're asking, wouldn't it have been easier for you to just set these two separately? Then the answer is yes. Uh, <laughs> so one piece of advice that I would definitely present is that uh, you may want to have your two tonal colors present at all times. Moving this down here just a little bit to get a little bit of erasing over here. Done. At this point, I'm just being a stickler. So, a second, I'm just going to call it and say that my flats are done. Yeah, I think that my flats are about done for the face. I haven't done anything with the eyes, so maybe underneath beak, put, uh, uh, build the next one, don't need it. So we put it in the trash can. We call this one eyes. And uh, go back in here, select the eyes. What color do we want his eyes to be? Let's go with... Uh, what about some brown in his eyes? Go with like a tonality of brown for his eyes. We'll go into that, lower the size of our pen, and then we're gonna color his eyes in these browns so yeah right in here and so now we can say that our flats are done um and with some of your co characters from comics uh generally speaking oh i see a mistake i see a little spot that needs some coloring right 
there and right there I tell you I get a little obsessive over this stuff um, but for some of your characters it, you, you may be looking at working with flats in comic strips certainly flats work perfectly fine um, but uh, one thing that you might want to consider is adding a little bit of weight and heft to it, in which case you can build some shadows and some lights and stuff like that. So we can definitely go into our reds and on top build a layer and call it red details. You got that right there. We're going to select our red color. And we're going to make it a little darker. Go down here and make it just a wee bit darker. Go down here. I'm sorry, go on the pen. Make that larger. Again, you can, if you, if you want, you can use uh, your bracket tools on your uh, keyboard, and they can make your pen size larger and smaller without having to go up here all the time. But since I'm working with this as a tablet, I. Uh, I'm passing my habits on to you, I guess. Um, so as you can see, what I'm doing is with that darker tool, I'm going to the areas where it's where the fur is just a little darker because of light and shadow, and I'm adding a little bit of light and shadow effects to it. Like right now, I'm making this section just a little bit darker. Okay, same thing over here, just a little bit over in this area as well. I'll also be doing a demo on marker work, uh, which should be uh, of interest to all of you, but uh, with regards to strengths of Photoshop versus hand material, um, I mean, by, they're all done by hand, but you know what I mean. Is that, um, again, if you don't like something, you can just get rid of it. And you can just push that stuff away. So, you're working on the red detailing area. See something. Hmm. Not really doing my offs, but anyway, um, I can go in also and uh, maybe even lighten that just a little bit, just a little bit, and go into my red detail section. Just kind of just go back in just a little bit to. Kind of pop it like like there's a shift in color. Like so. See? You can even do some of the shading on this side with a little lighter color. So that way the tonality is just a little bit different. And you can shift your pen size or if you don't like a certain size of your marks, you can just go back in and erase right there. Um, Another thing you can do is on top of this layer, you can build another layer and call it uh, uh, light gradient. And then you can sort of select, get your pen tool or whatnot. And then maybe select this area right here. And then uh, you can definitely select it directly to your lines right here and then not have the problem of extra light over here. But what you can do is take this color, bring it up to here, and then uh, Go to your gradient tool, like so, put a uh, lower opacity on it, something like, 
like so. And then select your gradient tool right here. Like that, right? Then go back in, get rid of this, find your eraser. Maybe get rid of some of that coloring to the side. Um, erase in there, erase in here. Give me some of that too over here. thinner line you can even go and add some as you can see what I'm doing is I'm not even coloring I'm erasing so I'm adding some texture from light to shadow just by adding a layer and then erasing it as I go. Whoop, I moved that by accident, sorry. Where are we at? Here's my friend. Alrighty, so then we can do that. See, right here. And it gives him a nice little sense of light and shadow still. see it gives our character a little bit of dimension and it uh, a sense of light and dark makes sense cool cool um, I'm gonna go to the beak next and I'm gonna do something similar details I'm gonna go ahead and select my uh, gray tones and I'm gonna go a little darker keep it there and I'm going to again I built this layer underneath my reds so I can just color right in without worrying about coloring over my red layer it's only gonna color over my beak layer because it's built above my beak layer if that makes any sense as you can see, I'm just dropping a couple of shades lower to give him some shadows. I'm gonna go in a little bit, give him just a little bit more shadow. So I can go to the corners right here and just give him a little bit more heft. And if I'm not crazy about something, erase, erase. You can even detail things that way a little bit. Let go right there. We're gonna go in a little, just a little bit in the corners right here. You can see right there some shadows and lights. Then maybe I want to put a little bit of light on the beak. So maybe I'll create another layer that says light beak.
Uh, I'm gonna go to my same layer. Now this time I'm gonna go lighter. I'm gonna go all the way over to here. And I'm going to select my brush. And I'm gonna go right here real quick. And add some slight lights right over here in the corners. Just ever so slightly. Right there. Right there, see how it pops up the beak just a wee bit more. And it gives it, and notice I'm not like coloring right on like heavy, like big old lines. I'm going to the corners and kind of putting a little bit of light and color on it. Um, eyes, let me go find the eyes real quick. Maybe build a layer on top of this is like light on eyes light eyes I'm gonna go back in I'm gonna go straight into those crazy ass highs that he has well first gonna go back in and erase a little bit more of my reds because that bothers me <laughs> go back out go back to my light eyes and I'm gonna go select my eyedrop tool. Select my brush. Let's decrease the size of the brush by a whole lot more. I'm gonna go over here. Where am I? Light eyes there. Yes, I am. Oh, I picked the same dark color. Um, I wanted something lighter. Something right there. Let's see right here. Right here. And right there. Just make two little circles to pop the eye out. Hoping those are coming in clear. If not, I'll make it even clearer that way. Ooh, it gets all pixelated once it gets close. And technically, we could call this guy done. However, I tend to do a background glaze sometimes on some of my pieces. Like, say, if I created behind everything a background layer that says back color. And uh, I were to block out the background. And let's say in the background, the color is, um, more of an orange let's say orange and then i go to my gradient spot and instead i pick paint bucket it's still set up at 100 percent and i just draw my paint bucket in and i set up at that as my background color correct now i'm going to deselect and i'm going to go to my eraser and I'm going to erase in my eyes. Remember, everything's still, it's the back layer, so shouldn't affect my eye color. So I'm gonna erase my, my eyes right there, right? And I'm going to select Pretty much. Oh wait, never mind. I need to bring, create a new layer. I apologize. I skipped a little bead. I'm going to go ahead and create a top layer, and I'm going to call it gradient. Gradient lights. And what gradient lights is going to do for me is I'm going to kind of. Go ahead and select pretty much my entire figure. But I want to make sure it also covers the areas right here that I kind of left out. I'm going to select my background color, which is already there, but just to show you again. I'm going to go again to the paint bucket color, and instead I'm going to pick the gradient tool. I'm gonna go right here and I'm going to select the single color option. And I'm gonna set it up at around 
31%. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab my gradient, do like so, and we'll see in a second a change in color once it picks up. Oh, there we go. Never mind. Um, see, right there. It lightens it up just a little bit and ties it to the background just ever so much. It's acting a little weird. Might be a little overheating already. Let me go ahead and colors right there. Let me go ahead and undo my gradient so I can do it again. Hmm, it's acting a little odd. But the idea of course being that you can actually add some colors and lights on top of it and maybe even go back in on gradients and just kind of erase spots. Right over here, if, I want, if you want to make it seem like it's way darker on one side versus another, you can always go back in and just erase. See? And it's almost like you're adding another layer of color. But again, this is super not necessary. Your original post was pretty much done. And to give you a better idea of how something like this might look, let me see if I have the other piece that I did right here. I did another piece with the uh, hot character on it. Um, is it this one, maybe? We'll find out in a second. No, but I had done some colors on top of this other version of the head. So you can see some colors right there. And then I'm going to go into my super heavy folder <laughs> and see where I put my uh, other, there it is. I'm gonna find it right here. Uh, right there. And there you see a, a more finished up version with uh, a full background, changes on the wings, colors. I made his eyes blue there, so you know, depends on what you're trying to do. Alrighty. And I'm really proud of my computer for behaving the entire time, although I think it's glitching a little bit. I can tell because it wasn't letting me shift layers. But that is essentially my demo. We can kind of go and uh, deselect now and kind of go into some of this stuff right here. See, you can take the layers on and off if you wanted to. I don't know why I cut off my layer up there. It might have been when I did my, I made a little bit of a mistake. And of course, everything that's here can be placed back, taken off. You can move everything to the trash can. So it allows for an easier access. It bugs me. I'm gonna go ahead and select this, this color. Go ahead and come right in. Maybe do some coloring like that way as well. Just to fix it. But I can do that later. Alrighty, folks. I believe this is the end of my demo. Um, I'll be joining you later on for a demo on uh, marker work as well. But uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. And, uh, oh, I forgot to do one key thing, which is everything that I don't like erase. That includes... The eyes but if you notice you can do cool things like only erase part of the eye so that way it looks like the lighting is being affected on the eye based on 
environment. So you can do pretty cool stuff like that. Um, all right, folks. Well, that's the end of my demo. And uh, I'll be doing one on marker work. And I can do further ones on background and, and Photoshop design as we move along. There'll probably be another one with another full, fuller character that I want to do. Uh, but for the most part, that's my intro. I hope you enjoyed it.